Okay, so for this second half, um, we're going to talk through exercise 118, and I'm going to give you some examples of what I want you to do. Uh, basically, we're going to be dealing with colors, right, and then color swatches, uh, which are basically a way of saving your colors so that you can use them later on. Uh, and it's, it's important to learn that because as you get um, further and further advanced in your world of InDesign, Illustrator, um, and Photoshop, you want to be able to save the colors without having to write down the color values and then keep them on a piece of paper. You could obviously do it that way, but saving them as a, as a palette, uh, a set of swatches, is a much better strategy, right? And you can save that onto your flash drive. So, uh, part one, I want you to find a Charlie Harper image. I want you to say that this is the one I'm going to use as my kind of base for what mm -hmm. I'm going to start my work with, and you're going to post that. That's its own post, right? Then we move on to part two, right? And we're going to go to a website called Color Scheme Designer, which is actually Palatin now. Uh, these, these websites change hands a little bit. Right? And so when we look at this, right, we get a pretty good sense of um, here's our color wheel, right? This is exactly what we were, we were working with before. Right, or, or what I showed you in lecture. Uh, in this instance, right, we have a monochromatic set of colors. Right, so if I were using these colors, everything is in the reds right now. We have kind of the deep red, right, to the standard red, all the way up to a very light red. Okay. If I swing this, we can see that my monochromatic colors change. Right, so I might be in a monochromatic greenish blue. Right. I can, I can continue coming around and we can see these are the different colors uh, that are available in my palette. Okay? As I go across here, however, right, there's my monochromatic one color. We can move to adjacent colors or analogous colors, which are giving me colors that are very similar to one another. Right? And as we look at it, we can see that there's not a lot of contrast between these colors. They're very analogous. They're very similar. Right? We can move on here. right? to our triad, right? These are like our complementary colors. It's actually technically a split complementary, uh, which basically means that we have a primary color and we have two colors that work nicely with it. My guess is that when you're picking colors, the triad is a really good choice, right? It's not directly complementary, but it gives you a nice split. So if I came around here and I picked that as my primary, I get two split complementaries there of colors that go nicely with this one primary color. Does that kind of make sense? Okay. We can move forward here to a tetrad, which is four colors, right? And we get a different set of colors that theoretically will work nicely uh, with one another. What it is, is it's a complementary color across there and a complementary color across here, okay? So it's two analogous colors and two complementary colors, okay? Um, so once we get a palette that we like, right? Notice we can also here to uh, adjust the shades uh, by clicking on one of these interior circles. Uh, we can adjust the shades. So once you get a color set that you like, right? And I'm going to actually go back to this one, um, which is the triad. And I don't know why it shifted there. Put a little bit back like that. Something like that. All right. So once I get the palette that I like, right? I'm going to go right here under Share Palette. Never mind. That was not. They moved links around for me. Under tables and export, that's what I want, right? It's going to give me, there's my primary color and here's my different shades that work. So what I end up with is I have 15 colors total that are working together here, right? We can come here to something called color swatches and we see that we can save it as an image or we can save it as an ACO Photoshop file or a GIMP file. The ACO Photoshop file is what we want. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that and we'll see that it downloads something called mypalette.aco. Right? And so I'm going to go ahead and show it in my folder here. There it is. And I'm going to copy this and I'm going to put it on my flash drive. And for whatever reason, not, I'm just going to put it in my 135 folder here. This is 118, maybe. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and save it right here. So I'm going to paste it. And there it is. Okay. So this is a Photoshop file. 
I'm now going to follow Photoshop 1.23, um, which will allow me to switch this from being Photoshop specific as a color palette to being something that's usable across all of the uh, Adobe products. So Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator. Okay. Unfortunately, it would be really nice if these websites made it an Adobe Swatch Exchange file instead of a Photoshop file, but for right now we have to deal with it as a Photoshop file. <coughs> so, what I'm going to do is go ahead and open up Photoshop, which I've already done. Remember you want to make sure you open up Photoshop uh, CS6 when you do that. And I'm going to go to, uh, just so you guys can see it here, it's Photoshop 1.23 color swatches. There it is. Okay. This is what I'm following along with. Right. I'm going to go ahead and go to my preset manager, right, which is under edit presets preset manager. Right. And when I bring up the preset manager, which is something you haven't seen yet, uh, this is where in Photoshop I can load different brushes, I can load different swatches, uh, etc. I want to switch from brushes to swatches, right? <laughs> And we see that this is the set of swatches that is preloaded into Photoshop. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and load more swatches. So I'm going to click on the load icon here. And when I do that, I'll go to my flash drive. I'll go to my Dropbox folder, my 135 folder, 118. There it is, my palette.aco. And I'm going to go ahead and click load. Okay? It loaded from here, that blue, these colors, which are my new set of swatches. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down shift and I'm going to select each of these like that. Okay. So there should be 15. I can count 15. If, if you're not sure which one it starts with, you could count 15 going backwards, right? Because that was the number of swatches that I created, right? And once I'm done with that, I'm going to click on this little um, gear icon. And when I do that, I can save swatches for exchange, right? It's really unfortunate because save set, you would think would be the, the way you would do this. They hide it under this little gear. And I'm gonna go ahead and save swatches for exchange. I'm gonna save it again to my exercise 118 folder. Uh, and we'll call this grant colors. And notice that it's now a not, not a .aco, it's a .ase which is the Adobe Swatch Exchange format, which means it's able to be opened in any of the Adobe products. Okay, So I'll go ahead and click Save, and I now have my Swatch Exchange file open. So now to prove that I know how to use this, right, I'm going to jump to the actual exercise page, and I have some presets that you're going to download. Right? And so I'm skipping right now past part three, which you're going to do part three in just a second. Um, and we're going to part four, good. So let me go to exercise 118. We'll come back into part three. I just want to follow this part all the way through. Okay. So as we come down here into part four, right, you'll see that I have a bunch of sample illustrator files that will correspond to the number of colors that you picked in your swatch. So first one here, I picked 15, so I'm gonna download the 15. So let me right click on it, save link as, and put it in my flash drive, in my Dropbox. Right. This is the color swatch 15. I'll go ahead and click Save. And then I can open that file. Remember, if I double click it, it's not going to open. It's going to open in CS3 instead of CS6. So let me make sure I have CS6 open. Perfect. I'm going to go to File and then Open. Go to my flash drive and 36. Oops, no. Or 135. Sorry. I'm jumping ahead of myself. There it is. Color Swatch 15. I'll go ahead and say Open. And basically what this is, is it's a grid of 15 squares that I'm going to use to apply my swatches okay, as proof that they work. So now it's a matter of actually loading the swatches into Illustrator to be able to, to work with them. So I already saved them as a swatch exchange file. So I'm going to go over here to my swatches. right? I, I'm in the Essentials menu structure. I have 
swatches as an option here and I need to load that external set of swatches. So I'm going to click on the flyout menu, which is the triangle with the three lines next to it. And when I click on that, I can say open swatch library. And notice there's a bunch of presets. I'm going to open another library. Okay. When I click on that, I need to go to my flash drive and open up my ASE. I'll go ahead and click open. And notice that it comes in, here's my grant colors, and here's all of my swatches. Okay, So those have been preserved, which makes life really easy now. So all I have to do is click on the first box, and actually these are, this first row is grouped together, so I can ungroup that, sorry. Let me go to ungroup so I can select these individually. There it is. And I'm going to click on the first color. And now when I do that, notice that it applies the color directly to my square. So we'll, we'll continue along here, picking each color. There. Okay. Then I'll come to this row and I'll continue. And I'll do my last row. And what this is doing is it's confirming that you understand how color swatches work. And there it is. Okay, so I have my colors applied. Now I'm going to save this for web. So let me go to File, Save for Web. There it is. Uh, it's a JPEG, that's great. The size can be small, that's fine. I'll go ahead and click Save. Now save it. There we go. All right, so after I've applied it and after I've saved it, it's going to be time to actually um, upload those. Right. I'm asking you to do it twice, so once will be for the Photoshop swatches and once will be for the il Illustrator swatches. I'm going to go back and do that in just a second. Um, so we'll post that at the end. Okay. I'm going to go back to part three and we're going to use a different website, um, which I also think is good. It's called Colored, C-O-L, and this is they, they, they came out when they were dropping vowels out of names, so, so it's C-O-L-R-D dot com. Right. I don't understand that trend. It started with Flickr, right? You just chop out a few of the letters, and then somehow we're, we're expected to spell, as if English isn't hard enough to spell. Yeah. So anyway, um, so we have colored. Uh, and what this website does is it interprets photos uh, into colors. Uh, and so if you have a photo that you like, it will try to bring out uh, a color palette based on that particular photo, that particular web page, etc. Um, so you can, you're welcome to create an account if you want. The stuff that shows up on their home page you can, you can work from as well. But we can also click this little power button and say create, uh, which is where we're going to create our own. Okay? And so we have some options. right? We can go to palette, for example, and we can do the same kind of thing that we've done before, right? where we have similar colors, uh, etc. I think the other website, the Paletin or the Color Scheme Designer, is better at dealing with this part of it. But what this website is really good at is something called image DNA, right? And this is where we actually pick an image, right? And it gives us a color palette based on the, the, the colors that are in that particular image. We can choose between three, five, or seven colors, right? Uh, you can open your own image, right? Or you can randomly pick an image. I'm trying to remember, I think it's this little refresh icon, no. I don't know. We'll go ahead and click open. Oh, yeah, here. You click on open, uh, and you can pick any one of a number of images that people have already uploaded, uh, and then you can get the color scheme based on that particular image, right? You can also choose to upload your own, right? So if you go to upload, you can go to choose image, and let's see if I can find one here. Right? Uh, and so I can get three, five, or seven. If I don't like those colors, I can keep refreshing until I get a set of colors that I like. Right? Once I have this set of colors, right, I can go to save. Right? Notice here we have an option to download an Illustrator, Photoshop, or GIMP. Right? I'm going to do Illustrator. So let's see. Uh, I'll click on Illustrator. And it's going to download an AI file this time instead. Okay, so let me go to show in folder. There it is. Let me copy it. And I'm going to place it in my flash drive. I click 
Clearly, I keep thinking it's 136 right now. I'm sorry. And let me go ahead and paste that. Okay. Now, this one only had seven colors. So I'm going to need a different Illustrator file from the course website to, to show how these colors come together. So let me jump back here. I need the one with seven. There it is. So let me right click and say save link as. And I'll click save. Perfect. Let me jump to Illustrator and I'm going to go to File, Open. And I'm going to open the seven. There it is. Same, same basic setup here. Right? I want to load in a different set of colors. So I'm going to click on the fly out menu once again. And I'm going to say open swatch library, other library. And I have to go to my flash drive to pick it. Right? And this one was the mycolor.ai. And I'll go ahead and click open. And there it is. Right? I had my grant colors and now I have my my color. Right? There's my colors from my image. So I'll pick the first one, pick the first color. Pick the second one, pick the second color, third. Oh, did I only do five? Yeah, okay. So apparently I only did five, so I really need the five colors. Not unless I created a gradient palette. So Illustrator swatches can save gradients and can save transparency along with the swatch. Um, but I would have to create that to begin with. Um, what I'm doing is just applying the color. That's it. Um, so let me go ahead and uh, save this one more time as a five. Uh, and of course, folder. Oh good, it went in the right spot. All right, same thing. All right, we'll pick this. All right, so once this is done, I'm going to save it. So I'll go File, Save for Web. There it is. I'm going to bump up the size here a little bit because it's really small. There. So I did 500 by 500. I'll go ahead and click Save. And I'll click save. Alright, so now it's about actually uploading those and creating a post, which I'm sure uh, you guys can do by now. Okay? Um, so, what I want you to do ultimately with this is, right, we've created our swatches. You show me proof that you've, you've worked with the swatches, you apply them to the Illustrator file, I'm happy. The rest of the day, what I want you to do is spend time actually working on your Charlie Harper, right? Try to develop what your color palette should be for Charlie Harper so that you have this saved and you can load it, right? Um, start working with your sample image and then go from there. Are there any questions? Yes? On the Charlie Harper, are we using any of the specific color swatch uh, like the three or the four or the picture stuff? It's up to you. It's up to you. Whatever. I, I would recommend trying the, the, the triad because I think it three working with three colors is easier than working with four colors. Uh, so I think I would start with that. If you don't like the colors and want to use different colors, it's okay. I just want you to consciously think about what colors are appropriate, right? And if you'd rather get your colors from the colored website where you're going from a photograph, that's fine too. Should we not keep the ones that are three that are close to each other? The analogous? Yeah. Um, you can, it just depends. Uh, you might not get enough contrast out of it. Uh, you might need the analogous plus one okay. or something to make it work. Yeah. Where do you find the colors? They're on the course <coughs> website. If you go to exercise 118 and you scroll to part four, all of them are available there. You just need to right click and say save file as. Okay. Yes, it is due after spring break and it's gonna be due on Wednesday. Let me look up the actual date. Um, It will be due Wednesday the 8th. Any other questions? No? Okay, good.